Well, our favorite Richard Sherman back in the news. Yes. He is our favorite Richard Sherman. Except <laughs> of all of them. I'm going to refer to him that way from now on. Our favorite of all Richard of them, Sherman. He's our favorite. Uh, was asked the question on NFL. I think he was at, with the NFL Network and, and was asked the question. I mean, kind of like we did with Golden Tate. I mean, it almost feels like if you're talking to a Seahawk, you can just sort of say, Harbaugh, go. Right. And uh, actually... I thought he did uh, to, to wake up an echo from Seinfeld. He did a, he did a tremendous response about nothing almost. He, he he in one sense, and you brought up a great point. You know, you're talking about a guy who played for the for Jim Harbaugh during his college career, and uh, when asked about him, said, "I don't talk to him. I have no relationship with him. You know, I don't. You know, he, what, what he says doesn't matter to me." Uh, so on the other hand, really not a ring endorsement. On the other hand, unlike Brandon Browner or Golden Tate, who mentioned the Sean Lee hit. Yeah, there was nothing, nothing negative either. No, he didn't take a shot at him. He didn't say he's a bad guy or he stinks or any anything. Uh, I want to hit him like I hit this guy or do anything wrong to him. But it wasn't a ringing endorsement from a former player. When it, it kind of got us to thinking about, well, how often do you actually hear somebody who's now in the pros when they're asked about their former head coach at the college level? Say anything other than, oh, it was great, or, you know, I really had a great time, or I learned a lot under him. or Not even, often. You know, even you'll get a lukewarm, you know, I enjoyed my time, you know, even if you don't like it. It's just rare that you hear something along the lines of what Sherman had to say, which was very measured and very, I don't have a relationship with him. I don't know. I don't, he can say whatever he wants. And it just sounded like, and we'd heard rumors before, and if there's truth to it or not, who knows. But just the fact that when he came out for the draft and when Doug Baldwin came out, two of his former players at Stanford, that he didn't do the best job of selling them. That's kind of the word behind the scenes is that he, you know, when coaches called him to sort of get a review or give us give us a breakdown of these two guys, that he wasn't, you know, over the moon about either one of them. Mm -hmm. So he didn't really help. One was a free agent, the other a fifth round pick. So maybe there is a little heat there. We know how Richard likes to carry a chip. And if there's any truth to that, you know, that's a big chip for him. But it was just interesting to hear a guy asked about his former coach and not have it be glowing or positive on any level whatsoever. It, it kind of sucks that that's his former coach because if it were any other guy, considering the way this debate has been going back and forth, we would have been clamoring for Richard Sherman to take one of his extremely well-educated shots. Yeah. You know, with that, using that Stanford brain and really taking a guy down without even knowing it. Instead, he winds up being you know, kind of a nice guy without being too nice. But I think what we've learned is we're not wrong in thinking that Harbaugh's kind of a creep because it's not just about the rivalry. It's clearly filtered down to his former players. As Bob likes to say, punchable face. Harbaugh. <laughs>